And welcome back. Now on to a very, very pertinent discussion. South Africans living in poverty will soon get some relief and it's all thanks to a recently launched project in celebration of Archbishop Desmond Tutu's 87th birthday and that was this past Sunday. And uh, this project is called the Nigela Charity Funding and Development Trust and it's fully introduced uh, and around uh, which is an initiative and we will hear more about that shortly and how the public can donate money when buying food from certain franchises. Now, the project has already raised uh, one million rand, we understand, with plans to raise a billion more. And uh, we'll find out more about those particular details as well. So to tell us about them, we're joined by Sipo Shezi, who's the vice chairperson of the Nigela Trust. Thanks so much for coming through. Thank you very much, Sakina, for inviting us. We really appreciate it. At a time like this, I think, you know, this is one of those things that some would think very simple, but such a necessary initiative. Yeah, Sakina, very much so. I think what we're doing here is a, it's a very innovative and revolutionary initiative. I think we're addressing two things, Sakina. I mean, the first one, we are addressing what has haunted the post-colonial state in Africa, the inability of individuals in society to exercise their civic responsibility and take charge. And what do you say is preventing them from doing that? I think it has been the tendency of African societies post the colonial era to abdicate it all to government and not take that active responsibility. You know. In our context, we are also taking this initiative to try and avoid those things that could haunt the ability of the democratic state from emerging. So basically, we're saying to South Africans, you know, take charge. Mm. That's the first thing. The second point is we are tapping into the best we have as a people, the goodwill. That's what we have as South Africans. You know. That is what has defined the emergence of the rainbow nation. That is what you know, underpinned the Madiba magic. That is what underpinned the miracle you know, of the South African scenario, you know, is the goodwill among South Africans. So we're tapping into that. You know, uh, we're telling to South Africans, you know, let's tap into your goodwill. You know. We've got high levels of poverty. You know in the country. We're saying to South Africans, let's go back to the basics. But how have we veered so far from those basics? Because there was a time when in this country, uh, government put the message out there and we were sieged with talk around this uh, evil nexus of um, the triple threat of poverty, inequality and unemployment. But that seems to have subsided. It's, it's been, I can't even say put on the black burner because we don't hear much about that anymore. I think there are three things to that, Sakina. The first one, I've always been of the view that we underestimated the extent of the damage that apartheid South Africa did on the social fabric of society. The second one is that I think... Uh, we seem to have lost the momentum that we had during the inception of the democratic state, just around consensus in terms of what defines nation building. I think that, you know, we have constantly drifted away from that consensus that defined us as a people. The third element is that we have just simply been caught up in the big picture stuff, you know, and you see it unfold. I mean, even in terms of, you know, uh, governance processes, we've been caught up in the big picture stuff. You know, we've been very good in policy making, you know, mm -hmm. but we have not given ourselves to drill into the real mechanics of what it would take to implement the policies we have put in place successfully. 
You're absolutely right, because even if you think of uh, Maslow's theory, his um, hierarchy of needs, right at the bottom, the first need that needs to be addressed are the physiological needs, um, to have fresh air to breathe, yep. to be able to eat, yep. and uh, you know to have a roof over your head, clothes on your back. Um, and Maslow explains that, that uh, that's the first thing that people would do. That's their first concern, addressing their physiological needs before security and before you get to a point where you get to a self-actualization, where you care about the policies that are passed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So why is it then uh, that we are moving away from that and assuming that people would be able to function and be productive citizens, active citizens when they are hungry? Absolutely, Sakina. I, I think that as a, as, as a country, we need to change the narrative. And that's really what the Nikola Trust Initiative is trying to do. You know, at a most practical level, you know, we, we're beginning to say, let's have a new form of discourse, but in practical terms. You know? Let us address those human needs at the most minute basic human level. Fact of the matter is that a substantial amount of our people go to bed without food. You know? The fact of the matter is that the high rate of crime is a consequence of the fact that there is mass poverty you know, in the country. You know? Now, given everything that we have put in place in terms of policy formulation, you know, we need to begin to actually say what would it take for us as a people to address these things. So um, before we run out of time, do tell us about the Rounder initiative and also who you've partnered with in trying to bring about this relief. As I said earlier on, Sakina, the Rounder initiative is about just encouraging South Africans to give. So tapping we, into that goodwill. Tapping into that goodwill. So we're saying to South Africans, let us make every cent count towards the alleviation of poverty. Contribute your small change voluntarily towards poverty alleviation. And we've said, let every South African get involved. So we've mobilized, you know, all industry associations. All of them, without an exception, they've come behind this initiative. But just how exactly do South Africans then get to contribute? That one, let me just first say that we have enunciated the principle of voluntary contribution. Mm -hmm. Where? You know? um, secondly, we are saying when you go and do your groceries, you know, and the round, the small change, contribute to that, you know, towards the Nicola you know, uh, trust. Is it something that you will fund. be asked at uh, the pay point or it's, how it's does something it that will be asked at the pay point, you know, um, we are popularizing it, you know, right now. At the pay point, you know, uh, when you, you know, about to get your tooth slip, you'll be asked whether you want to make your contribution, you know, um, uh, to Rounder, you know, and if you say yes, you know, uh, and then that contribution will be taken and be put into Rounder. Right. Uh, in the hospitality industry, it's exactly the same thing. You know, when you check in in the hotel, you know, you'll be asked whether you want to make a contribution you know, to the Rounder initiative, you know, and... So okay. all of this is already in place. So even if the cashier doesn't ask me, I can ask her. All of this is in place, Sakina. Even if the cashier doesn't ask you, you can ask, you know, the cashier, you know, that would might like to make a contribution. All right. Um, and just very briefly, um, the association with uh, the Archbishop uh, Desmond Tutu and this particular initiative to alleviate poverty. I, I think this is the history basically behind the association. The owners of the patent, you know, of Rounder had a 14-year relationship with the Arch and a group of about 10 charities that were working with him, 
you know. And when they came to approach uh, government, and at that stage I was the advisor to the former Minister of Social Development, and they said, you know, we have got this relationship with the Arch, we've been working, you know, on this initiative, and would like to roll out, you know, um, this initiative in partnership with government, in partnership with the private sector at scale. So that's basically how, you know, that relationship with the Arch has evolved, you know. Uh, and we have now, you know, said that in the context of uh, the Arch's uh, championship in terms of the relationship between peace and development and redressing the legacy of apartheid, it makes a lot of sense, you know, that we retain that legacy through intensifying the Rwanda issue. Mr. Shezi, thanks so much uh, for coming through and uh, basically educating us on this great initiative to help alleviate poverty in this country. Mr. Sipo Shezi, Vice Chairperson of the Nigella Trust. Well, we're going to take a break, and uh, when we come...